All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor for episode 103, and as you can see, I have a very special review episode of a lovely brand new 2020 Porsche Taycan. Taycan. That's just what it is, Taycan Turbo, this particular model. Thank you for joining me. I'll, first of all, I want to have a big heartfelt thanks to Porsche Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle now. I've only had it for a couple of days. I didn't have it very long because it's a very well sought after vehicle. A lot of journalists are looking to get their hands on this, but I've got it for a couple of days. So I'm just doing a quick impressions and a quick overview of the vehicle. There's tons of in-depth videos that are out there that you can look at, but let me give you some of my thoughts on this vehicle. Now, if there's anything this vehicle has taught me over the last couple of days that I've been driving it is, you know, if I can sum it up, if I could, if electricity could take human form, I think the Taycan would be the personification of electrification. It's got a nice little ring to it. Now it's pronounced Taycan. Think of tie, you wear a tie or there's a tie in sports and think of Star Trek uh, two, I believe, Wrath of Khan, Khan, Taycan. There you go, that'll get the name for it. It's a beautiful vehicle from Porsche and, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, the only thing I can say, it's kind of like the closest thing I'll get to probably F1 or something like that as far as driving a vehicle. Now the Taycan comes in three models. They originally launched two, but then they added the 4S uh, later on in uh, 20, or late 2019, or early 2020. So it's the 4S, the Turbo and the Turbo S. Now there is no Turbo, of course, turbocharger in these vehicles since they're all electric. But uh, what they do is Porsche designs it so that you can get that extra kick like a turbo boost kind of thing. And it does work very well, very neck snapping, I may add. It's been really hard to keep this car within legal limits of driving, I'll tell you, it wants to go. Porsche has a long history in the automotive marketplace, as many knows, in high performance and, and beautiful vehicles, and the Taycan is no exception. According to Porsche, it links their heritage uh, to the future. It really carries forward the success of their brand moving forward. Now, Porsche has committed to spending over 6 billion euros within the next few years on their electrification strategy and portfolio. Quite a significant number. Now, of course, they're part of the VW group. So uh, VW, of course, has been making lots of announcements of electrification. This is falling into that as well. Now, I mentioned those three models and they all look the same. There's a little bit different badging on the back of it, but they are just beautifully sculpted cars. A very wide stance, low stance. They have an air ride suspension, which makes it adjustable. You can adjust it up and down a bit uh, low and there's different, of course, driving modes, sport and all this kind of stuff. I've been kind of running it in normal mode for the most part, which is very, very quick, I may add. There's no really reason to, reason to drop it into other modes unless you're taking this into the track. Extremely grippy tires, they're very sticky. You know, I mentioned um, on my last review that I did of the VW e-Golf that that vehicle drove like it was on rails. This one ups it. It drives like it's actually painted to the road. It is that good. You can take corners, the rear comes, follows the, the front right around. Uh, no hesitation at all. This thing turns on a dime, stops on a dime with the, with the big brakes, as you can see. It's just a lovely, lovely performance machine. Now, this is the first production all-electric vehicle with an 800-volt system. Uh, most all, all everything else is based on 400 volts for electric cars. So what that means is that this will hold more energy density and be able to charge much faster as well especially during, with the exception of Tesla and their supercharging, a lot of vehicles can't take advantage of any fast speeds beyond 120, 130 kilowatts or so. This vehicle can. Now, as I mentioned, it's got the three models. The, uh, the, Taycan, the Taycan 4S uh, starts uh, with only 562 horsepower uh, based on 19-inch tires with a zero to 100 kilometers or zero to 60 or so seconds in uh, or speed, excuse me, in about only four seconds. So that's pretty slow, by, I guess, by comparison, right? I don't know. Uh, and you can move up to, to the Taycan uh, Turbo and uh, that will generate 670 horsepower based on 500 kilowatts uh, motor, motors. Now these are all wheel drive vehicles um, and that'll take you to a zero to whatever in about three seconds, 3.2, something like that. Then if you want to spend money on the top of the line Turbo S, now that has features like launch control, overboost power and so forth, that'll produce 560 kilowatts or provide you with that kind of power to push you over 750 horsepower for an equivalent very, very fast for a street legal production, quantity production vehicle. Top speed is up to 260 kilometers per hour. So if you're in the Autobahn, this is the vehicle to open it up. It loves speed. It loves that kind of driving, uh, but I don't know that. Uh, you know, I, I stayed within legal limits, folks. Um, and it'll give you a sprint speed uh, uh, oh, below uh, three seconds into the 2.8 range, which is extremely fast. 
I mentioned charging times and power. This has a 92 and change kilowatt hour battery pack that's usable. Uh, it, will, it does support fast charging, as I mentioned, up to 270 kilowatts. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to be able to actually try that out. My battery is not that low. I started when I charged it up to full the other night there, um, the first night I got it, and I started with about 400 and change, 475 range uh, kilometers or so of range on a full tank, or full tank of electrons that is. So I, I haven't really been able to liquidate that very much, even with some spirited driving, I may add. But they do claim uh, uh, five to 80% in about 20 minutes or so. Um, as I mentioned, it's a 93 and a half uh, kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. I mentioned the sculpture and the design of it. The, the beautiful design is always keeping with the Porsche heritage. Provides a drag coefficient of 0.22, which is pretty slippery. Uh, the only one that I know that's better right now that's being advertised anyway is the Lucid Air at 0.21. Um, so this is really, really nice. Now, you know, I can go through some stuff about infotainment and menus and apps and all this stuff. Yes, it's got all that, folks. Trust me, in spades. 10.9 info in, infotainment, uh, you know, nice uh, digital display on the binnacle, all kinds of different things you can set at a little uh, control uh, panel that you can control some of those features closer to, to where you are. You don't have to reach up to touch the screen. It's got voice functions. You can say, hey, Porsche, and uh, take me to a coffee shop or whatever, and it'll do that kind of stuff. It's got some luggage compartments. It's got a trunk, a, a frunk, excuse me, and a uh, trunk, of course, a boot. The front compartment has about 81 liters of uh, capacity and the rear about 366 liters. Hey, you don't buy these to cart stuff around. You buy these to drive and to cart some friends around. Now the meat of this vehicle, of course, beyond the battery system, and it is wonderful, I may add, and the power is that it's an all-wheel drive, and it's made it to a two transmission or two-speed transmission um, installed on the rear axle, which is an innovation that, that Porsche developed specifically for this vehicle. Um, the first gear gives the Taycan uh, more acceleration from a standing start, so it gives you that, that launch capabilities without even having the launch control uh, model. Um, from the standing start and then the second gear kind of kicks in with a long range ratio ensuring what that does is ensures high efficiency and equally high power reserves uh, and it can also apply at very high speed so like if you're in the highway and need to pull out and pass somebody you're already doing 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour so and you need to go out and pass a truck something like that this gives you that boost at high speeds to do that with that that two speed type of transmission now I mentioned that this sticks to the road like it's painted on and part of that has to do with the tires of course they're lovely sticky tires with uh, 245, 45s up front, if I believe, and 235, 40s, a little wider on the back. They're, they're higher uh, sidewalls than I would normally think, but it gives it a very, very pleasant ride, and that's probably the main takeaway that I had, one of the main takeaways from this vehicle, you know, made it to the air, uh, the adaptive air suspension that it has, because it can be, you know, lowered and risen a little bit, lifted, is that the ride is really, really pleasant. I was expecting a bit of a bone jarring ride, like a little bit of a history with Porsche there. They grip the road, but you're not the most comfortable. This is very comfortable. Uh, this drives really, really nice. Um, it hugs the road. It handles the bumps very well. Um, and, uh, you know, I was pleasantly surprised with that experience. Now I mentioned, you know, uh, the handling, it has dynamic uh, control sports modes and torque vectoring and all that kind of stuff with the all-wheel drive with two electric motors. It has very high recuperation as well. It's, they claim that it's very unique. You can get up to 265 kilowatts in recuperation energy. Now, um, I didn't uh, select a driver profile. I kept signing into this vehicle as a guest because that's what came up. So I, every time I turned the vehicle on, I had to reset a lot of my settings as far as um, what kind of driving mode I was in. Driving mode stayed, but things like recuperation, automatic turns off and some other functions so I kept having to turn those on the recuperation is very very light it's not very heavy you don't feel it it does help and if it's off you coast there's really little recuperation or regenerative braking uh, but you know Porsche is claiming that you can get up to 265 kilowatts uh, of that um, in recuperation now the interior is all Porsche it's German it's solid it's I mean it's a high-end interior it's flawless from my perspective you won't, you won't find any squeaks and rattles and fit and finish issues, issues on this vehicle. If you do, they're gonna be so minor that uh, the Porsche engineers are gonna come uh, screaming out of the factory uh, uh, to, to look at them because uh, they're built that well. So this is a very solidly built car, just a beautiful interior. Uh, again, a very much a driver's vehicle. Uh, the rear seat is a little tight if you have some passengers. It is a two plus two. You can get a five person variant. You'd have to order that rear seat a little bit different configuration than you see here in the pictures. Um, otherwise, it really is a two plus two a driver's vehicle. 
So in my short take with the uh, Taycan, I, you know, I've been able to drive up in the country here uh, into some of the country roads and put it through somewhat of its paces. Again, the speeds that I could do legally here are nowhere near the capabilities of these vehicles. But you know, the driving dynamics, the stickiness of the tires, the suspension, the handling, the power is incredible, folks. It really is neck snapping. I know that you know, the ludicrous mode Teslas are in that 2.8, 2.9. Uh, three second range, certainly the Roadster at 2.4, 2.5 I believe, uh, you know, somebody will, will quote me or, or even lower, is extremely fast, but it's not out yet, so we'll have to wait and see what, what happens. This is an extremely fast vehicle, took a couple out, kind of launched it uh, for a quick, uh, you know, couple of seconds just to see how fast they can get up to 60 and people were just blown away by the speeds. I know that that's a fairly regular occurrence now with people driving EVs, especially some of the more, the more powerful and faster EVs, but on this vehicle with the handling and the the surety that you're on the road, that you're planted on the road, is that this car is going to take care of you is unparalleled in my opinion. I have a little video here of when I picked up, after I picked up the Porsche, I just got on the high just to show you the lane keeping and the adaptive cruise control. Uh, watch this. It is a very high priced high performance all electric vehicle a fantastic lovely beautiful vehicle that porsche has developed and brought into production but it's priced accordingly now that entry level 4s uh, that i mentioned starts at about 120,000 canadian only 120,000. that's for the base model so that puts you really into tesla model s long range uh, pretty well the ludicrous mode i believe territory here in canada are pretty close so it's got very good competition in that and this handles extremely well you go up to what this is this is the turbo model uh, it it, it uh, prices out after your um before your taxes at a $193,240 Canadian. Yes, you heard me right. And if you want the top of the line Turbo S, you're going to be in excess of $220,000 Canadian. Now, one other cool feature is that this is a very quiet car. Right now, the air condition is running and you can barely hear the fan, the condenser and the compressor and everything that's going on there. It's extremely quiet. However, you can turn on a mode of sound. Uh, and it gives it a engine rumble kind of space age woo, wine thing. It's like going through a warp speed generator or something like that. Uh, so have a listen at the sounds. All right, so just some quick driving impressions. You know, I've been going on and on about the handling and just the superior experience that this vehicle gives you. And it really does have just a gobs of gobs of power and handling. Now, one of the things uh, I right now have it on quiet mode, as you can hear, I'm doing about 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna turn the electric sport mode on. And hopefully you can, can hear that whine kind of sounds like a spaceship uh, spaceship blasting off there uh, into never never land basically at the speeds that this thing can do um, it is just a phenomenally fast car um, it has it doesn't have launch control but it's pretty fast off the line and let me just test that here I'll just do a quick a zero to 60 here I'm stopped and I'll just hammer it So that's the 
shifting the two-speed transmissions as I mentioned with the turbo boost type of capabilities that get you from 0 to 60 in the three and a half second or so range on this particular model. So overall just a fantastic driving experience. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I become speechless in this, <laughs> really not much to say. It's everything that I would expect it to be and more. Well, my final thoughts of the Porsche Taycan are this. It's just an ultimate vehicle. It really is a fantasy vehicle. If you can afford to get one of these, you will love this vehicle, especially if you're in climates that are conducive to what it is today. It's fairly warm. It's pushing 30 degrees Celsius here with some humidity. This car just thrives in that. Now, not to say it won't drive in Canadian winters, but I wouldn't. I, I would probably feel pretty bad taking this out in the snow. It'll handle it well. I know in Nordic countries and everything, they got a lot of snow. It's a, put some great snow tires on this, and it'll do great. But I wouldn't want to get our our salt and all the the stuff that they put on the roads here in Canada onto this vehicle and have to worry about it. It's just a beautiful vehicle. But besides that, you know, it, it's it really is, as I mentioned, that personification of electrification. If I could take an F1. And I know that there's the E-Series as well in racing, but if I could just kind of take an F1 and put it into a, a, a consumer a street legal production vehicle, I think this would be the equivalent. It handles that well, folks. It just, everything about this is flawless from a handling and the capabilities. And I know I haven't, I did not have any time to take this to the track or really kind of put this car through its paces. I know it's certainly much more capable than I was able to put it through on just some, some country roads and some highway and city driving. Um, as I mentioned, the range, I mean, the, the, the battery range is not prominent. It's, it shows you the, the range on the dash in a small thing. When you stop the car, you can press the battery button to see the state of charge, but that's about it. They don't focus on the electrification side of this vehicle at all. It really is focusing on all the performance side, changing your driving modes, your suspension setup, your chassis setup, all that kind of stuff, your, your, you know, uh, all the amount of power that you can give and, and the tuning of it that you can do through the electronics here in the vehicle. That's what Porsche brings to this game. I, I didn't even care what the state of the charge was of the battery because it has plenty of range in the, in the uh, times that I was driving it. I only plugged it in once just to see what I could get on a full charge. This is a relatively new vehicle, just had under 4,000 kilometers when I picked it up. So I'm sure the battery is still trying to sense itself out. But as I mentioned, well over 400 kilometers of range, over 450 in these nice warm temps, which is more than adequate. Now you can drain that pretty fast by slamming this thing, but even in driving it a little aggressively, I found the battery just to still maintain itself quite well and not dip as it, it, might, it would in other electric vehicles. So I'm very happy that Porsche has come into the electrification game with a, with a vehicle of this magnitude. Yes, I, I do talk about mass market and the adoption there. And you know, if, if I won uh, you know, the Super Lotto jackpot or something like that and wanted to, to drop some money on a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or, or you know, a, a McLaren or something in those classes and I wanted to stay all electric, I would look at this vehicle, folks, because it is that good. It is just a fantastic, phenomenal vehicle. If you've owned a Porsche in the past, you know what they're like, you know what you know what some of the things you like and some of the things you might dislike about it. But this has nothing, absolutely nothing that I dislike about this vehicle at all. It is just perfectly, perfectly sculpted and flawless in the execution of its electrification powertrain and all the goodies that come with it. So would I recommend this vehicle? Of course I would. Why wouldn't I recommend this vehicle? It's a beautiful vehicle. And uh, if you've got the money, take the plunge, get this. You will not be disappointed, folks. So by the way, I felt like a rock star driving this thing around for a couple of days, going to get a coffee through a drive through through Tim Hortons or Starbucks, wherever I happen to be. Everybody stops and looks at, at this vehicle. Even driving down the road, stopping at a light, people are thumbing up, waving. Hey, what kind of car is that? It really is a head turner. Now I have to go back to, to my lowly uh, leaf, which I love, of course. So, but hey, that's okay. You know, I get to live a dream for a couple of days and that's the beauty of, of being getting access to some of these vehicles. So again, I want to thank Porsche Canada for allowing me the use of this fantastic vehicle that I've taken really good care of. I parked it every night in my garage, just with its, its itself by itself in the garage, making sure that nothing touched this vehicle. I kept it as safe as I could because uh, at that price tag, you, you buy it, you break it, you own it, and I don't want to buy it. So, uh, but anyway, I want to thank them for that, and uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to watch this episode. As uh, hey, that's it for this episode 103 of my impressions and uh, review of the Porsche. Taycan
turbo in this particular model. Uh, beautiful vehicle. Again, thanks everybody for watching me on YouTube. Please subscribe and like and do a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback on this vehicle and, and what you think of the shows. Thank you for all that. Of course, humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. If you're interested in learning more about Patreon, check out the website here. Uh, even a couple of bucks a month, if you think you, you, know, you want to support me that way, would go a long way as I continue to try to better the shows and, and do things. Uh, hopefully, maybe next year we'll open up to travel. It'll be, I'll be able to spread the wings again and try to get to places where I normally wouldn't be able to get to. So I want to thank Patreon supporters for that. Of course, my PSA, everybody stay safe. I'm going to do what you need to do. Follow your local guidelines. Please do that. And, you know, keep your eyes on the electrification landscape. And until my next show, please, everybody stay safe. And I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.